Here are our worship announcements for this week. Um, a reminder of the upcoming December services. Um, next Sunday, we have our Advent for worship on YouTube. Then Monday evening at seven will be the longest night service, a service particularly designed for any who are feeling a sense of loneliness or loss. And um, I believe that applies to all of us this year. So uh, feel free to join in for the longest night service Monday at seven. That'll be broadcast on Zoom right here from my home. Uh, Christmas Eve liturgy will be Zoom liturgy also at 7 p.m. on the 24th. And Sunday, the 27th of December, we'll worship with our entire synod in the service of lessons and carols. Don't forget also that um, we'll continue with Wednesday prayer pause and Thursday evening Advent devotions led by Pastor Laura. Since we won't be in the sanctuary this year, um, there won't be any poinsettias, but um, <laughs> if you'd like to buy a virtual poinsettia um, and give it in memory or honor of a loved one, the contribution in any amount will be given to the Little Food Pantry to uh, put food in the stomachs of our hungry neighbors. You can do that on the website or you can simply get in touch with Donna Smith and she'll walk you through. <laughs> um, similarly, um, it's time to think about end of year giving. I know this has been a really strange financial year for all of us, but we hope and pray that <clears throat> Luther Memorial will be in your end of year giving plan. And um, again, uh, you can give through the website or uh, send a check to the church and um, we'll be grateful for your end of year contribution. What a wonderful congregation council you have. They are leading in this transition process in a way that is gracious and um, authoritative. We had a great council meeting on Tuesday evening. Um, I'm happy to tell you that we're uh, in the formation process for our transition team, which is the very first official step in moving towards the call of a new pastor to serve Lutheran Memorial Lutheran Church. So that is huge, huge news. Um, lots of other stuff going on with the church council that I don't need to bore you about right now, but I did want you to know that um, your council is faithfully at work. Nothing encourages us for the future as much as one of the things we get to do in worship today, and that is to welcome new members, Samantha and Joseph Lyons. How gracious our God is that even in this pandemic and time of Luther Memorial transition, God continues to send new disciples to serve in our midst. And finally, don't ask me for any details about this, but please Trust Laura and me and just do what we ask you to do. Please send us a picture of you holding a candle for our Christmas Eve service. Do it as soon as service is over today. Just take a selfie with a candle in your hand and send it to a website, outreach, or Pastor Hoffman. We'll see that it gets to the right place. <coughs> big secret. <laughs> Let us worship God. There's so much so here, so much shame and hurt and fear and this grief feels like the ache is never ending the night is long can't find sleep where's peace gone it's so It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who 
Time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change everything There was a child who had a terrible day. She left her lunch at home. She skinned her knee on the playground and no one wanted to sit with her on the bus. As she sank into her mother ar mother's arms at the end of the day, her mother said, honey, what was the best part of your day? The little girl cried and said, nothing. The entire day was terrible. So the mother got down on one knee, wiped away her tears and said, there's always some good. Sometimes we just really have to look for it. The little girl looked up at her mom and said, what is good about today? And the mother said, for starters, you're here in my arms. Friends, anytime we gather together to worship God, we are here in God's arms. So may we recognize that gift. And in doing so, may we sow joy. Let us worship holy God. I dream of dance parties in the kitchen. I dream of laughter that is contagious. I dream of birthday candles and another beautiful year. I dream of family game nights and dinner parties with friends. I dream of homemade Halloween costumes and homemade family recipes. I dream of pillow forts, fireflies, and front porch swings. I dream of every little thing that brings joy, and I know it comes from God. So today, we light the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of all tears. 
God's dream for this world involves a joy that overflows and is contagious. So may this fire burn bright. And as it does, may we sing. May we dance. May we laugh. May we hold on to the people we love. May we sow joy in the hurting world and may it be an act of holy resistance. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to unmute as together we confess our sins. O coming one with a sky full of stars and a world full of flowers, there should be no end to our joy. And yet, we let it slip away. Instead of singing like Mary or dancing like David, we pass from our beauty of most days on faith. Forgive us. Teach us the ways of children. Laugh and dance and sing. As if joy is everything that keeps them alive. Maybe joy in the mercy and endless compassion of our creator jesus christ was given to die for us to forgive us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of christ and by christ's authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The first reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, beginning in chapter 61 at verse 1 and continuing with verse 8 to 11. The spirit of Yahweh is upon me, for Yahweh has anointed me. God has sent me to bring news to those who are poor, to heal broken hearts, to proclaim release to those held captive, and liberation to those in prison, to announce a year of favor from Yahweh and the day of God's vindication, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to give them a wreath of flowers instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of tears, a cloak of praise instead of despair. They will be known as trees of integrity planted by Yahweh to display God's glory. They will restore the ancient ruins and rebuild sites long devastated. They will repair the ruined cities neglected for generations. For I, Yahweh, love justice. I hate robbery and sin. So I will faithfully compensate you and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Your descendants will be renowned among the nations and your offspring among the people. All who see you will acknowledge that you are blessed by Yahweh. I will joyfully exult in Yahweh who is the joy of my soul. My God clothed me with a robe of deliverance and wrapped me in a mantle of justice the way a bridegroom puts on a turban and a bride bedecks herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and a garden brings its seed to blossom, so Yahweh makes justice sprout and praise spring up before all nations. The second reading is Psalm 126. When Yahweh brought us captives back to Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Our mouths were filled with laughter then and our tongues with songs of joy. And from the nations we heard their God has done great things for them. Yes, Yahweh has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Now set our captive hearts free, Yahweh. Make them like streams in the driest desert. Then those who now sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. Now set our captive hearts free. Those who go out weeping as they carry their seed for sowing will come back with shouts of joy as they carry their harvest home. The Holy Gospel according to John. Then came one named John, sent as an envoy from God, who came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through his testimony everyone might believe. He himself wasn't the light. He only came to testify about the light, the true light that illumines all humankind. Now the temple authority sent emissaries from Jerusalem, priests and Levites, to talk to John. Who are you? They asked. This is John's testimony. He didn't refuse to answer, but freely admitted, I am not the Messiah. Who are you then? They asked. Elijah? No, I am not, he answered. Are you the prophet? No, he replied. Finally, they said to him, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, the voice of someone crying out in the wilderness. Make straight our God's road. The emissaries were members of the Pharisee sect. They questioned him further. If you're not the Messiah, or Elijah, or the prophet, 
then why are you baptizing people? John said, I baptize with water because among you stands someone whom you don't recognize, the one who is to come after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to even untie. This occurred in Bethany, across the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of our Lord. There has been a lot of talk recently in our world about the new normal. I shared in our Thursday Advent devotional discussion group how much this annoys me and frustrates me. Nothing feels normal right now. And I'm not so sure it felt normal before the pandemic either. Normal is just a hard word to grasp right now. When our world and society feel anything but normal. In our first reading today, we hear about people returning from exile. They finally make their long trek back home or to what they think is their home. Our text leads us to believe that the home they return to is destroyed and unrecognizable. The text tells us about ancient ruins, long devastated sites, ruined cities that have been neglected for generations. Those returning from exile don't recognize the land to which they have returned. Nothing is the same. In fact, most things are utterly destroyed. I think we can relate at some level to those in exile, right? We haven't been forced out of our home country, but our country certainly doesn't look like it once did. Once we finally return to the other side of this pandemic, I bet we might not recognize some aspects of this world. In a sense, we are experiencing our own exile right now. We are exiled from each other, from family, from physical gatherings, from Christmas parties and physical touch, from gyms and restaurants, from Christmas Eve services. We are exiled to our homes. Most days, this might even feel like we are wandering in the wilderness wondering what new restrictions might be implemented or what new data they might know about COVID. Wandering, looking for hope, for life, for health, and an end to all of this. The wilderness can be a really scary place. It can be lonely. It can be dark. Sometimes in the wilderness though, we might encounter someone else along the way. John the Baptist often found himself in the wilderness, testifying to the Messiah that was to come, to the one true light of the world. John's mission was to prepare the way for Jesus to start his ministry. John was setting the stage for Jesus to begin. Now, there are people questioning John about who this Messiah is, that he keeps saying is coming. I might also question a strange man in the wilderness if he was preaching about the coming of the Messiah, but John continues testifying to God's light, the light of the world who brings hope and justice, the light of the world who sets all captives free. John does this in the wilderness Oh, the wilderness, you don't expect other people to hear you or to be there. It's often a lonely place, an empty place. And yet John still preached and testified in case anyone, anyone at all might have heard him. And certainly people heard him and wandered with him. Right now we are wandering. We are in the wilderness and have been in the wilderness 
for some time trying to find our way. But I believe we are starting to find our way home. We are beginning the journey of assessing the damage and destruction. We are sitting among the ruins, looking around, thinking, how do we fix all of this? But even in this wilderness wandering and assessing of damage and destruction, there are people testifying to the light, just as John does. There are dreamers in our world who know that this world is in destruction, it is violent, it is destroyed, and yet these dreamers have a vision of peace. Those who dream have a vision of peace, a vision of God's kingdom. In Portland, Oregon, people have marched and held vigil every day since George Floyd died in May. In Columbus, Ohio, people have filled the streets and cried out for justice for Casey Goodson, proclaiming that there is a better way than this. Those dreamers have visions of peace for all of God's beloved children, especially the Black lives. There are so many frontline workers testifying to the light. Dr. Fauci and all healthcare workers who are saving lives and keeping us informed. These folks are doing the grueling work of managing a pandemic with little resources, and yet there is hope and light among them. Those dreamers have visions of peace where hospitals have enough resources and no one dies for lack of medical resources. A world where we all care for our neighbor by wearing our masks. There are folks advocating for universal health care so that your life-saving treatment from COVID doesn't mean that it costs you a lifetime of debt. Those dreamers have visions of life and health that are provided simply because you are human, where no one has to go sick because they lack coverage. There are those who dream in our society and know that there is a better way. These dreamers have visions of peace and justice for all people. You all are dreamers with visions of peace for the Broadview neighborhood. You feed and support our neighbors during this time. You are keeping the free little pantry stocked and when needs pop up, you give generously so that our neighbors are cared for. You are dreamers who have visions of actively sharing Christ's love in community. The list could go on and on, but there is light in this world. The light is here. Even in the wilderness, we can testify to the light. Even in the midst of ruins and destruction, we can proclaim that God has sent us to bring good news to those who are poor, to heal broken hearts, to proclaim release to those held captive and liberation to those in prison, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve. We are called to testify to that light. And in these days, that can seem so hard, but it is here. The light of God is in each and every one of you and is radiating through this world. Our world is about to turn, people of God. It is going to turn in ways we could never even imagine. I am sure there will be destruction and ruins and devastated cities but these are the growth pains of something better. We are sitting in the ruins and destruction, but the light leads us forth to restoration and justice. We are called to testify to that light. For God's future is better for all people, and that is the light to which we testify. The light that brings good news to all people. The light that was born in a dirty barn to an unwed mother the light that cannot be extinguished. Thanks be to God and let the people say, Amen. Amen.
I invite you to unmute yourselves as we pray together so that you can offer your responses. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Today we gather to pray for the church, the world, and all in any need, responding, your mercy is great. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce your, the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they do. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you prepare what was once, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who tur turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and perfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy, is, mercy is, great. is great. Mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Share that peace with whoever you see on your screen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now we have a time of offering. So if your method is to give online, please do so now. Um, if you want to write a check, please do so now. But uh, I invite you into this time of offering.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord is with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, holy Lord, God of Father, power and might, and might, heaven and heaven earth, and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the highest. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. And at this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on the bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. In anticipation and hope, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us, Save from, us the from the trial of the and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You got that.
hear these words or share them in your own home setting. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Before our post-communion prayer, just a word about our friends, uh, the Lions. There is a family emergency and they're unable to join us today. So please hold them in your prayers and we will welcome them as God provides opportunity. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, rejoice in the coming one. Thanks be to God. You're welcome to stay around for the postlude and then for some visiting afterwards, or if you log off now, God bless you with a wonderful week.